Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Giddy Reader Radio Show. This is Michael. This is Peter. And, you know, it's been a while since we did something yeah. like this. And I feel since we did it, you know, we're almost getting to the end of the year. And uh, maybe it's like a good look back on, you know, the, the big occurrences this year, things yeah. that have happened, things that haven't happened. Mm -hmm. So let's look at Amazon. So yeah. what I noticed this year is that this is like the first year in a long time that they haven't released any new hardware. Nothing, man. Uh, I don't, I, I think the Paperwhite 5 is now 2021. And then last year they released the Paperwhite 5 16 gig variant, which is just kind of like a filler. And yeah, dude, nothing this year. They released some kids pro tablets and like the max, uh, what do you call it? Like laptop thing. And then a, a active capacitive pen, but no e-readers at all. Yeah. Tablets and Alexa devices, but you know, with e-readers, they haven't really done anything yeah. and it's, it's surprising. So what I've noticed in them in the trend, at least with Amazon this year, was software updates mm, and they probably yeah. released more software updates this year than any other year so they really kind of focused on changing up like the you know the interface for the kindles yeah um, you know i know for like the scribe they've released like at least six or seven updates just for the scribe I introducing know. new features mm -hmm. like better note-taking functionality better pdfs be searching in pdfs like they've really gone to town to instead of releasing something new to just get the software side like really good and yeah. from what i've heard is that they've homogenized all of like the the softwares for all like the kindles they support now so it's like 10th generation and 11th generation only is the only things they support so mm -hmm. they could issue support for one dev like one device and you get the same sort of features for other devices but they just like unlock or lock out like certain features and functionality so despite the fact that the scribe will get all this new stuff that will still be on the Kindles, but it'll be like grayed out or not yeah. available in those e-readers. So it's I think it's easier for Amazon to push out updates now just because they've got the software side yeah. in order now. Mm -hmm. So that's good to see. Um, yeah, it's just weird that they haven't released anything this year. Um, I've seen some pictures that have gone through this year where they're I don't know if it's a web design error or not, but People have said that there's going to be a, an Oasis signature edition with USB-C. Have you heard about no, this? I, no, I did not. That's usually you and the uh, news publication team that are sleuthing to get the good um, news stories. No, I, that didn't come across my desk. Yeah, I've seen it on Reddit. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things that only appear in a few markets. You know, when you look at um the kindle then halfway down and it's, it lists all the different products like yeah. paper white paper yeah. white signature edition um so in some markets they're next to the oasis there's an oasis signature edition oh. which you know i don't know if it's somebody if jumped the gum early yeah. it's, it's been there for like six months like right so people Weird. there's been various reddit threads like about it so i think it just bears mentioning that it could be something that they're thinking yeah. about releasing, but I haven't seen any FCC applications. Speaking of FCC applications, there are going to be, there's just going to be a new Kobo e-reader coming out. Yeah. We don't, good. we don't know when Nectronics filed it on, which is what they do for all Kobo e-readers. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's probably likely going to be either the Sage or the Libra 2E. You know, they're going to oh, add that yeah. 2E thing to yeah. it. So it's it's a singular device, but the FCC application never really like gone into specifics like screen size or or this or yeah. that. So it features like the same gnoming, like the model number as I think the Libra, but other people have said it could be the Sage too. But I think one of those two models will be refreshed likely 
you know, first couple months of like next year. I think it's too late to do something this year. I was going to say like, that it's November, what, like 17th today, right? 16th. So like, yeah, they I can't recall any of the big three ever doing a December release. You know what I mean? They Barnes and Noble those... did last year. <clears throat> They did a December release. Yeah, didn't they? they I'm not they, sure. Let's check I it out. We have the, a catalog the, on our the Nook Glowlight uh, four. Plus. You might be right. Yeah, let's see when that came out. Uh, four plus came out. Uh, no, that was mid year. That was July, and we maybe had... it was like the four E. Oh, that's a good. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah, you're right. I think it was one of the four E. So it wasn't like a new device, but it was like the eco version of the four at the time. Yeah, but it is kind of not common for the big three to do a December release. They usually want to hit those Black Friday, bo- uh, not Boxing Day, um, uh, the the fall sales, and then like the back to school sales is usually when they come out or spring releases. So I doubt. Yeah, you're right. It's probably too late now for them to actually come to market with something packaged ready to go in stores okay it, it was it was yeah so they've done a december release for the original nook low light 4 in december of 2020 december first, yeah. 2021 so it's not out of like this world that yeah this might happen but yeah i, I think that's like it's too late for kobo to, kobo's marketing machine and everything yeah. like that i probably think it'll come out like before Mother's Day of like next year, because like Mother's Day's Mother's Day is always like a big thing for Kobo. Like they always like have big sales because like you know primarily women readers, right? Like yeah. that's 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 the trend. Um, so yeah, uh, Barnes and Noble, they you know they have just <laughs> recently discontinued, or they yeah. have announced that they're going to discontinue. Um, you know, 12 year old e readers, so yeah, that's uh, the simple touch, simple touch with glow light and a new glow light. Uh, they're shutting off services in April and coming June. You know, you won't be able to like even log into like new devices, or yeah, you won't be able to buy anything from the store. So, you know, I mean, for people that have hung on to those devices over the years, like generally, probably the batteries are like long dead because it's like. Yeah, you know, but like it's sort of like these like lithium ion batteries can only have so many charge cycles before they start to degrade and things like that. I have heard about people who have bought bought new old stuff from like eBay or like third party marketplaces and stuff like that. And I just want to urge caution to if you see those models on sale now you know, you're not going to have any type of longevity in, in into, you know, a a few months you'll be able to use them for. So probably don't think that anyone should buy them. Even if you see one, you know, on eBay, like $25, like $10, it's like, well, if it's factory sealed, then we're talking about something that hasn't been through any charge cycles. But yeah, if you, if you're like, Oh, I, I just found this crazy old, uh, Sony or this old, like, um, uh, Kobo, whatever, and it's 10 years old, that battery is toast. That's a decade of people like leaving it on charge, letting it deplete, not charging properly, charging to 100%, all that. So yeah, it definitely, um, you know, the deal can always seem super sweet when it comes down to the price, but you're probably going to have to buy a new battery. But the good thing is about some of those earlier devices like Amazons and Kobos and Kindles, they all had replaceable batteries up until 2012, 13 anyway. So you might get lucky and be able to just pop in a $14 battery. Yeah, those old e-readers, like especially the old Nooks, old Kobos, yep. even old Amazons, like the batteries were out. replaceable Yeah. Um, because it was easy because all the backs had screws. Now That's they're all right. like glued together and it's impossible it. to like open they're them sealed. up. Yeah, yeah, unless you're a if you unless you got a heat gun, you know what I mean, and you got those uh those pry tools and stuff like that. Even then, sometimes the batteries are soldered in. We've heard reports, so they're just they're definitely not user removable. Yeah, I think for the most part, it's because they they have to seal them up because of, like a lot of the modern e readers are waterproof. That's correct so too. They don't they want have... you opening them up anymore. That's right. Yeah. And it's like, you know, at least with Amazon, you know, they sort of implemented the policy last year where they're only supporting 
like just a few generations of Kindle. And, yeah. you know, with older Kindles, it's like you're not going to receive firmware updates anymore. No security updates. Right? Like, and they, you no know, Wi-Fi, no 3G on some of the devices. So it's like you can't even use the DX now because that has 3G only, which is uh, no more access to 3G. And it doesn't have Wi-Fi on the, the DX. So if you have one, you can't even use it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to sideload in your content. But uh, the Scribe has picked up the pieces and picked up the slack as being, like you know, the large screen Kindle. It's the largest screen Kindle they've ever made. So Yeah, I mean, you know, with e-readers, people hang on to them for 10 years. And it's like yeah. they they serve the purpose. But, you know, technologies change. It's first specifically like yeah. cellular technologies change like 2g 3g towers are all gone now pretty yeah. well so you know yeah. if you if you bought a kindle with cellular capabilities like especially older ones you can't even use them anymore so no, it's like wi-fi only yeah it, it's basically just like a relic at that point something kind of you know it's, it's a novelty to have something like that yeah just some people you know, collect old phones, you know, that they've had over the years. They don't really throw anything out. Some people yeah. just have a drawer full of old e-readers that they, you know, <laughs> instead, because e-readers don't really have much of a trading value, you know? No, like, no. Who, you know, Peter, I got like a 10 year old Kindle. I want, I don't need it anymore. You want to buy it for like 50 bucks? They're like, no, it's like useless pretty well. Yeah. I just buy a new one for 50 bucks when it's on sale. Yeah. Or I can go to, I can go to wish and get like a refurbished Kindle Paperwhite 4 for like $19. No, I don't want your stupid ass old drawer full of like, you know, sewing bobbins. Mm -hmm. And then you, you just, you push all that garbage aside. And you get this dusty old e-reader. No, I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, So Onyx. Yeah. Oh, God. I just put my hands on my head with Onyx. Great company, great products, but... Can you just pump the brakes a little bit, those guys, man? It's like, I I think like you and I had a couple like, you know, board meetings and stuff. And we're just like, okay, okay, which one is this now? <laughs> so it's like, this is replacing that. Yeah, their, their product lineup is, and we follow Crazy. this as professionals Crazy. and yeah. it's too much. It's they have too, too many much. units, but yeah. the problem is with too many units is like, they're all out of stock. Like yeah. everything like that they announced like in the last couple of months, the Palma, yeah. uh, what it was it? The uh, Nova Air 3C. Uh, the, the books tab ultra pro C pro yes. the note air three C yeah. Uh, all of those like things, even like accessories for them, like the yeah. Nook pro are sorry, the barn, uh, the I know you, Onyx yeah. books C pro and Tra like the, the yeah. keyboard case with trackpad yeah. not available. So it's yeah. like they launched it and it's like, they were just sold out. So it's like, you can't buy it from Onyx directly. You can't buy it from any right. of the distributors. It's you can't buy it from anything. So it's like, you know, whether Onyx was having financial issues or just producing too many units like at once and just like, you know, we'll, we'll do a hundred of them sell out a hundred use that money for another production run. And it's like, I don't know what their business model is, but it, the, you know, it's, it's troubling that every year they almost release double the number of units that they released yeah. prior, <clears throat> including yeah. new SQ, SKUs and stuff yeah. like that. And you just simply can't buy them. So it's like, I think, I think Onyx really, really needs to like consolidate into like, one ten point three, one thirteen point three, one seven point eight, and maybe like you know a few smaller e-readers right. like the Palma or yeah. you know the 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 page <laughs> or whatever else that they're gonna yeah. do some manual page turn buttons type of thing. Um, having each one of those, including like a pro version, including a color version, it's like yeah. suddenly you have like what like fourteen devices that you're selling, yeah. Yeah. and it's just like you know Onyx is not a big company, so it's like. I'm not surprised every every new model is like out of stock and they continue to sell stuff that's like two or three, you know, they're selling like their original Lumi on their website. They're, so they're it's selling like, the Lumi and they're not really pushing the books X, which is the 
the one after the Lumi. Not only that, Mike hit it on the head. They're they're they got too much. Like for them to do the Tab Ultra C color and then discontinue it, say nothing, release the Nova, the Note Air 3C. And it's like, what's that? What's that one? It's like, oh, that's the airline. It's like, wait, what? Okay. And then everyone bought that. And then they're out of stock. And they're like, wait, why is it out of stock? The Tab Ultra Pro C, the Tab Ultra C Pro comes is, oh, what's that? It's like, it's got an SD now. But the one I bought 10 months ago didn't have an SD. Oh, at least I have the keyboard. No, no, it doesn't work on the new one. It's like, what? (laughs) We moved the pogo pins to the side. So it's like, okay, so I just spent 800 bucks on all this stuff. And then 10 months later, I had a buy and well now like uh oh so yeah it's just there's too many overlaps there's too much cannibalism with their own brand they still have the Nova Air C but they have the Tab Ultra Mini C the Tab Mini the Tab Ultra C, and it's just like oh my goodness like what are you trying to sell people on and that's only the international crowd they have a whole line of domestic units like 15 domestic units the the tab x the note the poke, x, the, for the poke, the poke five. six or something the leaf yeah. three which they didn't release internationally because they got two leaves discontinued them both jacked it up 50 bucks and put out a page so it's like people are really having trouble and we're and mike and his team on the news publications like oh i gotta rework everything and let's put out this new uh article about what's new and then we get 16 samples here in production and we're like okay so we just gotta got to redo everything redo everything and then take all this information and pitch them to our our guys who who manage the store and the uh the listings and everything and have them change everything and be like okay the whole direction is flipped they got nine new devices let's go with this and people had just bought the older stuff it's um it's a madhouse right now it is yeah i mean they're a strange company because they're the only ones that i know that release like 10 new devices like a year yeah. or so you know for the north america for like the western crowd yeah and then the crowd. same a number of devices or more for like the domestic china crowd right. so it's like and they totally have different specs and stuff like that too it's just not the same devices we have that are just retooled or something like that they're completely yeah. different devices so i mean they just rely on just selling hardware and that's it like they don't they don't sell software as a service like they don't have like a a subscription plan where it's like you get for a color device they all have 16 colors uh you pay two dollars a month and you get 32 colors that would be something that people would buy you know and you can carry that from device to device so it's not like you're locked into a specific device or yeah. if they were to have some sort of like vip loyalty program where you can pay like you know you can buy something at full price and then do like a trade-in or something like that to yeah, get like the Apple. latest and greatest yeah like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah you know if i want to upgrade to like a new iphone and I have like the, you know, the flagship model of last generation, they'll give me like 900 bucks, like towards yeah. like a new phone. So it's like, you know, I'm paying like, I'm paying like, you know, 800 bucks for like the top of the line, like new phones. So right. I know they sort of have this sort of stuff in terms of, you know, they, they could do it. I, I think that they, they could have to do it. Uh, you because... know what it is uh, on that point it's because they don't focus on the infrastructure in their company for second turn and what i mean by that is apple when they take in your old iphone 13 or 12 they recondition it they refurbish it they recertify it and then they have second turn outlets that they sell as refurbs recertifieds it's but mainly onyx international does... markets yeah but onyx doesn't do that they do one and done and then it's like yo you just bought a tab ultra c well that's gone. That's old. It's like, it just came out 10 and a half months ago. It's like, yeah, but it's gone. We have the C pro buy this. And it's like, well, can I trade in? It's like, no. So it's it's like, okay, well that's, that's the end of that. And we're starting a new chapter of me buying an $800 product. So yeah, they don't have any second turn infrastructure within their company to be able to do that. So really it just kind of 
saturates the market with a thousand different models and it leaves everyone kind of not knowing what to do with with the direction of where they want to make their purchase yeah. and this is uh, no one. loyalty program too yeah. many options no software as a service so onyx is entirely reliant on selling hardware yeah. to stay in business and that's the only and it seems like they're just like taking pre-order money manufacturing them taking pre-order money manufacturing them so it's like <laughs> yeah. they never have enough to fulfill all the outstanding orders on their website right. and third-party distributors whereas a lot of other companies aren't in the boat like they have the ability you know they're only selling two or three products at any one time right whereas like onyx is you know 20 products combined for all markets and it's just it's just too much like it's it's too confusing and so I yeah, these days it's hard to recommend Onyx to to people just because it's a convoluted product line. If you want a digital note taker, um, look at Remarkable what they're doing. They only you know have what? one product or super. You're totally note. right. You know they have two products at any Fujitsu, <laughs> Fujitsu Quad. Uh oh, you okay, man? Yeah. Um, Good. Uh, yeah, Fujitsu Quad. Yeah, yeah it's, two it's really 10, it's really something. Inch. It's something to say that like for the past couple of years, everyone was looking down on the more simplistic units for more features, Google Play, better pens, better functionality. But now it's like it's come full circle to the point where it's like people are a little bit over. They're overwhelmed with the choices out there that we've actually seen more sales and more inquiries and more saw, uh, uh, customer questions revolving around the Fujitsu Quaderno than almost any other brand because Fujitsu is a big international conglomerate. They make war planes and they make escalators. They also make the Quaderno and it's just crazy to see that someone would want something so basic. It's very good, but it's basic. It doesn't have Google play and a glow light and all these fandangled Netflix streaming and stuff like that, but it works. And people are like, you know what? I see value in something that's purpose built and I want it. And we're just like, yeah, you know what? Wow. That's something to be said by the more simplistic manufacturers. Yeah. And if you only have a product line with, one or a couple devices yeah it's way easier to market easier. to get a brand message across like yeah I, remarkable has just done it remarkably well in terms of they're just flat yeah you know maximizing ads on facebook on twitter yeah. on on at google ads and they're only advertising every one product so that's all they um, have they don't compete against anyone for any of those keywords so they they do it well and 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 super note you know they have had the same units of, available for like three or four years now, but yeah. they are coming out with new models. Um, yeah. You know, the AC uh, sort of they're doing uh, Nomad, the seven. I yeah. Nomad is for sure this year. And then they're doing like a, I think like a 10 inch and a 13.3 inch sometime in like early 2024, but they haven't mm -hmm. even received like F they haven't even filed FCC yeah. applications yet. The Nomad is this year? Yeah. Oh, we're running out of time. We only got five weeks left. Yeah. We are running so, out I of mean, time, that's, everybody. That's, that's what they say. They have like okay. this roadmap that they publish like on their, their Supernote Reddit page. Yeah. And it's like always updated and they update it with like, this is what we've added. And yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, so they're, they're coming up with a new model. I mean, it looks like they're using a different type of film. Yeah, they were they were uh, promoting film. that that it's supposed to be uh it's they've always used regenerative films anyways to accommodate their ceramic tips, but they said it's like bigger and better and and badder kind of thing. So, um we'll see how it goes. You're feeling okay, yeah, cuz that's yeah. the most important thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, just um I'm just dry mouth, so it's like it's just good. coughing a little bit. Yeah. But we um, actually saw uh we actually saw Supernote uh at the trade show we went to, SeaTac uh, 2023 in Tokyo a couple of weeks ago. We didn't cover them because they didn't have anything new. They didn't have any kind of software solutions we haven't seen before. They had the same pens that we covered the the Gen 2 Heart of Metal Samurai bronze plating and they just had like the same old units so we didn't film on them or anything. But we ran into them and they're right next to the Dasong booth and uh yeah, yeah, you know, everyone seems to be doing well. So Dasung as well as Big Me yeah. have both like so they're both on crowdfunding campaigns right now for like 25 inch like Kaleido 3 monitors. Yeah. 
Uh, the Big Me one actually has both warm and cool lighting, whereas the Dasung is not like doesn't have any lighting like at all. Yeah, so, the curved one you mean, right? Yeah. Just so the curve, so Dasung has two. They have like a traditional oh, monitor, yeah. and then they have like a curved version. Curved one, yeah. Both of them don't have a front lit display. Only the Big Me one uh, mm. has like a has um the glow like lights, a front yeah. light and, and and a glow light. So. They're both like on, I think they're both on Kickstarter and they, yeah. you know, they basically just launched you? and I think they raised like maybe Death Song and Big Me both uh, had Big Me's raised less money just because they're like a brand that not a lot of people have like heard of. Whereas yeah, like Death they Song has been, been as in a, international. Death Song has been in a monitor game. That's the, that's all they do is like monitors, except that's for they're right. not an e-reader like thing that they did like two miles for, but they, for the most of their like business life, they've all just done monitors. So it's, just it's finally monitors. nice to see companies doing like full color e-ink monitors now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're all uh, expensive. They're all ridiculously expensive. They're you know? very expensive. Even like, black and whites, man. Phillips tried to get into it, and uh, Onyx is getting into it. They're all just very expensive. Like a 13.3 monitor from Philips. Good company. But 800 USD for a tiny little screen monitor. Dude, you can buy like a $40 LCD monitor anywhere. You could, you could go to a a used shop and pick one up you know what i mean but yeah for yeah they, less benefits. money than the das sung or the big me i bought like an apple studio monitor yeah, with like a yeah. height and tilt adjustable yeah stand for an extra three hundred dollars i know it would have cost for like an e-ink monitor so yeah, i would love an e-ink monitor in my life it's just like i we haven't even gotten any of them to like review yet just because like no we new. haven't we haven't gotten any of the color stuff the uh no, we got the Ezai from uh from Ezai, and we got the Phillips from Phillips, but um none of the Big Me or Dasung yet. They're they they're raising money via cr uh, crowdfunding, kickstarting, and Indiegogo because they don't have the money to make five hundred units at two thousand dollars a piece. That's why they do that. They don't have hey, let's just throw eighteen million at something that we don't know if it's gonna work. That's why crowdfunding. So yeah, so the, the, the Big Me monitor like is coming out february 2024 yeah that's what i hear and the das sung one about the same time so yeah. you know crowdfunding with the intention of using that money for like a manufacturing run and both those right. companies have a pretty long track record of a crowdfunding yeah but delivering on products so they're, they're oh both, yeah they're, they're both two trustable those. companies the only thing about dasung is that although they make good products anything they make that isn't a monitor is typically terrible so just buy the monitors are great but the tablets the the a4s everything else is just kind of eh. any final thoughts before we wrap it up I think we're good. Uh, head over to our eBay page. We have a ton of things on there that have affordable prices. And we actually say that because we're trying to expand that second turn outlet and hit it up if you have time. All right. So keep on uh, your browsers locked to goodyreader.com as well as youtube.com slash goodyreader for all of the videos. And for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. My name is Peter. Everybody take care. See ya.